Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, this is the Behemoth system. So this is our Behemoth 600 series. Um, this is a fly tank. So it's a 460 pound with your 20% your head space. So keep it under the 500 pound. This system, we've got to put in, in several places around the country. Uh, we can keep it in an F1 certificate of occupancy. Nice. Um, doesn't go above. We don't have the MAQ problems that everyone else does. Yeah, yeah, of um, course. Because of the way we run, um, so this this solves that kind of problem. What kind of hoses uh, are these? Tell me about the scale. I guess you guys have here. This is an Arlen scale. T one D one. You know, it's like a two thousand pound scale because of yeah, the way of everything. Right. Makes sense. Um, but operates the same way, but it's, it's an Arlen scale. So solvent comes out of solvent tank, goes through manifolds into... Yeah, so you can see the kind of the solvent supply rail at the top. So that runs each one. And so when there's columns here, there's lids. So you can you can inject to any column. You could run all five columns at the same time if you wanted. But mm -hmm. what we found is a really good, a good flow. And, and so process, yeah. kind of keep it continuous. Yeah, so this system, you know, depending on whether you're running butane or propane, this is 20 to 30 pounds a minute. They were constantly extracting one. So we do, we do each column down the line, and then after the five columns are done, we send it to the other side. Um, and then while those, that, those columns are extracted, we're changing these out. So it's kind of like riding a bike where you just, if you want. But, it, but it's nonstop, continuous, always extracting. Um, what's cool about this system is everything is divided. So we have a white film on each side, we have basins on each side. So you could process like two different cultivars at the same time. So. <clears throat> You could keep this side one strain, that side another strain. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Or you could be tolling for two clients, keeping it's it all separate. Yeah, and then there's no there's no crossover of the solvent, I guess, between the two sides once once it leaves the manifold at the top. Nope. So it stays. Everything would be separate, so you yeah. can keep all your batching could stay very separate. Um, you can even do like an A and a B wash mm. because of the way we can ride it back. So you could come in and run super cold and like do a really fast short extraction and just get the fire out. And then route it the other way and come back in and just blast it. Okay. And because we have pretty much on demand heating and cooling, it's like five minutes to get to negative 50 on this system. Wow. So you could go cold, do a cold extraction, and then do a hot extraction, and then go right back to cold while you go the other side. How long would it take you from like a negative 50 C to, I don't know, like a warm? How warm do you guys take it? So this system will go 100 C temperature swings in 10 minutes. Wow. We tell them how, how many uh, uh, mm -hmm. gallons per, or pounds per minute of solvent you're... So this thing will cycle 20 pounds a minute of butane, 30 pounds a minute of propane. And then you're recovering, what did you say, 35? So one of our GD1 white films, the most we've ever done is pushed it to 36 pounds a minute. 100% propane. That's pretty impressive. Like 21 pounds of butane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still really fast. Though. That's very fast. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so once it's once the solid leaves the columns, does it travel in this direction or is it the solid? Yeah, so it can go either way. So that's kind of what I was saying. Like okay. you can do the A wash. So you can you can close you close this valve and it, it'll run that way. Okay. But you can also close that valve and run it back that way. Got. It. And then would it go up up into this pipe into here? Yeah. So this is a filtration point. Um, oh, okay. There's different things we can do here. So if you have heavy metal problem, you can do media. We can do a carbon filter in here. Or really, we just like to do like dust and key. Like one thing we found when you start running a thousand pounds a day. A lot of particulate. Yeah, you, it really, it really, that was kind of like one of the first challenges mm -hmm. that we really noticed is like just dirt, like running hemp and and really like, people don't realize when you scale stuff, like these little problems that aren't problems in systems, like when you times it by, tw like that's the biggest challenge when you scale everything. Yeah. Little is, problems yeah, little problems, problems are all of a sudden become big problems. Like yeah. even yields, you know, like on small systems, people could be leaving a lot behind and no, and they get away with it because it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But when you go and run the numbers and you ran, a, you know, 2,000 pounds today and you left 5% behind, it could be this phenomenal, num you know, it's a lot of money at that point. Oh, of course. So the, the whole system is really driven by the compressor. So everything's looped. So it's, it's, it's moving. I know they've got two corkins. Very cool. So right? you can tell that one is for your process and one is for your, your utility. Yeah, I mean, so this is it's just a clo it's like two closed loops. So we have a process that runs refrigeration, hot and cold side, and then we have um, so utility that runs the hot and cold, and then process that runs the extraction. Very cool. But yeah, we don't really have any problems. And then those are um, each collection coming up and over. 
Yeah, these are just basins. Um, so they're kind of storage tanks. So from here, um, it fills up and then we drain out the bottom. Um, so we're recovering out of here, you can see constantly. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not the primary recovery function. It's just kind of like a holding they're, tank. They're just holding tanks. Yeah. And so, and then we do all of our, all of our like CRC or filtration or crash yeah. um, hangs off of here. And so you can either go through that or go straight into recover, recovery. Um, and there's like a way you guys don't have like main valves on the on the on just like the skin in general. Like there's a lot of valves, but like yeah, I mean the top, tops of these reactors don't have it. What we found is like once you really get good at running the system, like one person can run this entire system. I thought, yeah. um, super it's it's really just about like understanding your pressures and keeping every keeping just everything going like this all the time. And so the challenge becomes changing the columns this fast. Um, but we have some new new stuff that we're working on that we'll we'll come out with later this year. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of the two bolt problem. The two bolt. What do you mean? Oh, for the like the SSH. Oh, okay. We've got, got it. We've got a design yeah. that's uh, yeah gonna yeah. make it so some it's just quick clamp. Yeah. Be quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about the cooling system? Like, so uh, I guess how you guys run it off of uh, Corkin, but. Where does it exchange the heat, I guess? How it's, does it exchange the heat? It really kind of runs on itself, you know? Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's designed off a traditional refrigeration system, but we've taken it a step further. Um, it's part of our patent, and what makes it unique is most people can probably figure out how to get the propane to negative 40, but then what ends up happening is you're, you're just re-injecting this liquid and it gets hot on you again. So we've actually figured out a way to keep it cold all the time. And so we go like a step beyond traditional refrigeration. Um, and we've actually already gotten down to negative 110 C with propane. Wow. And we know, so we can, propane won't freeze until negative 188 C. So we know that we can get to negative 150 C, um, true cryogenic, yeah. and still keep going. So Do you think there's a value to going that cold? Yeah, um, when we start talking about cold crashing and dropping out THCA powders, yeah. um, obviously when you're extracting, like- Not, not necessarily on the extraction you, you lose solubility. We, we right. really see like when you get, I'm not sure exactly where, but like negative 80 to negative 90 C, we see that the solvent stops extracting. So yeah, it no longer has, sol the, you know, doesn't hold the solubility. No, for sure, for sure. So Very cool. not on that side, but definitely on post-processing and, you know, you guys, cold crashing. So for the, like in terms of the, using the, the refrigerant as a heat exchanger, do you guys use the heat off the by the exchange for for these reactors or? yeah so the the heat is being ran that's running it's the system's actually running on the basins and the white film got it that um, makes sense so you know i've always thought like how it, there's, so there's a lot of has like, somewhere to go right energy yeah there's a lot of energy yeah the cooling because you well exactly it's it re really cold and the, it's really hot the traditional way everybody does it to bring yeah. these outside you know they're, they're using yeah. an inefficient cool like propane and butane they're, they're really not solvents they're refrigerants yeah, would yeah. Be, is a better way to describe them. So why not use them as refrigerants? Yeah, no, it makes sense. And, and they, you can use them to heat and cool themselves. But basically everyone's bringing in poor refrigerants to yeah. heat and cool a very efficient refrigerant. Yeah, and you got, you know, your chillers creating a ton of heat and you're, you know, or your heater's not creating a ton of like cooling capacity, but still you're using heating and cooling. Yeah, I mean, since, since the pump exhaust runs the white film, it actually becomes this like net zero thing where the more heat that the more heat that the the compressor supplies to yeah. the to recover, the more pressure we can supply to the inlet, so we actually recover faster. That's that's so that's so smart. That's such a like smart approach to it because I mean it's like you have a balance between your your cooling, you know, where you're probably you're probably yeah to your point of running cheaper, even like on an operational like just operating on a daily basis than, than any other skid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the system, it's, it's just kind of like harnessing the power instead yeah. of fighting it. Everybody, yeah. you bring in all this extra cooling, and then you bring in all this extra heating, yeah, and then yeah. you bring all this cooling back, and yeah, and yeah. it's it's really not very efficient at the end of the day. So, like we said, you know, use the system to run itself, and all that goes away. That's, That's smart. What, uh, really what smart. is this guy here for? That's just a vacuum pump, so it's the manifolded pump to the whole system. So okay. here, you know, after you, after you change your columns, you pull back, but the whole system... This thing's actually, everything's hooked up, so you can run every zone, pull back on the entire system right have, from there. Could you guys uh, run like a uh, Venturi? You could, for sure. Um, we don't really need to. I mean, this thing, 
now. Cracks down pretty It's fast. fine. Yeah. Um, as far as pulling back a couple minutes, it's, it's yeah. really not a big deal. Sure. And, and we, don't, we don't need a deep vacuum for what we're, for what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, a little tiny bit of... Just want to get the oxygen out is yeah. really the number one thing. How'd, how'd you guys get started, I guess, in the equipment design, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, really, because one of my business partners, you know, Zach was the one. So I was in the cannabis industry from way back in the day, um, you know, pre-legalization. And then... Here in Colorado? Yeah, here in Fort Collins. Fort Collins. So yeah. I, we, I was a part of a company that started here. And, you know, even in the very beginning days, um, when it was medical, like, when you could grow at your house and sell to the dispensaries and the city of Fort Collins. Original, yeah. Original. Yeah. And the city of Fort Collins shut us down. And then we had to like campaign to get it back and then we got medical back and then that's when they opened up OPCs and so we opened our first warehouse. And then I built one of the first um, rec and medical MIPS in, in the state here, well, really early days. What was days that of, called? Um, organic Alternatives. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. So um, did a lot of work with those guys, you know, kind of got my education in weed and learned how to do ethanol extraction and hydrocarbon extraction. And I met Zach, and Zach was just, you know, kind of working out of his house, and he had all these designs already. He, you know, he had the white film, he had the behemoth, and I met him, and I'd been running a closed loop for like three or four, year, five years at that point, and I started telling him like, here's all these problems that we have, you know, we'd call our manufacturer, and they'd be like, well, that's just the way it is, you know, like yeah. there's there's literally nothing that can be done, yeah. and Zach was like, oh, well, here, do this, like, oh, we do this, and. And so I, I attached on right right away and had a lot of contacts in the industry and and so I, I was like I mean I can go sell these systems for sure um, and I understood them and knew how to run them and I was like they're so unique and and, and just really solving a lot of problems um, that we were experiencing and it was it really felt like it was like the first time where it was like an operator focused solution to problems and it wasn't an just like an extractor making an extractor yeah someone that someone that actually <laughs> yeah. knew why. It was such a pain in the ass to have to do these things where you'd call the manufacturer and they're just like, well, it's not a big deal to us, you know? Like, no, yeah, I mean, at least, you know, it's uh, surprising how many times, like, you go to equipment manufacturers and they have, you know, someone on the team that has experience in extraction, but they themselves have never really had two people in experience yeah. in extraction. Yeah, so, over and over, yeah. You know? and so I have a really kind of a unique lens because I've been on the other side. Yeah. Of, trying to figure this out like we went through everything i mean in the very beginning even you know like uh like trying to learn like what are we going to do like where do the vacuum ovens go like how do i get a pump like just learning every everything about everything and having to figure it all out knowing nothing at the time and how, how long have you been closed it? i mean we probably started in like 2009 wow. i would say 2008 i would say that's awesome um, that's a long time. yeah just the learning at that time you know like I don't know how much I was doing, you know, really just like tinkering and and probably saying things like probably doing things we shouldn't talk about. Yeah, but that's how you learn. Yeah, yeah I mean that, but that was a long yeah. time ago, um, you know, and that's how pretty much how we got here. We just just been just been going the whole time. Yeah, cool. How long has Illuminate been a company? I guess how long have you guys been selling equipment? So we had our five year anniversary in September when nice. so Zach had already been doing this for a couple of years. Was this this was your first system? Yeah, that's the original E4K. It's like an antique now that we just just keep around. So he said he went from this one to this one. <laughs> yeah, and then we worked backwards on all the other systems. So you know we kind of got we kind of realized that this thing was too big for a lot of people. What what are these up here? Uh, they're condensers. Are these condensers too? Um, these are part of the refrigeration system. So there's a condenser, there's a, a solvent supply, storage, there's an oil separator to protect the foam. Um, Smart moves, right? No, it's like everything, of... everything is so well thought out. Mm -hmm. Do you guys put your skids together yourself so you weld them? Yeah, so all, all every frame is custom built here. Um, so we have full flexibility. Um, we deal with a lot of room restrictions and height restrictions. So. We'll always be a, a, a fabrication shop for sure. You can customize things. Yeah, and we've been getting a ton of custom work from you know people around around the state now. More and more people being aware that we're here, so I mean, we can build like custom lids, and I mean really we can we can do just about anything because you know we we have the ability to build I mean, we have the ability to build this, so it's like we we have quite a bit of capabilities to, to custom fabricate stuff. Like, welding, you can do welding. Yeah, we have drills, mills, lays, um, full CAD engineering designs. We can do. Oh, your ISO. 
Yeah, we are ISO 9000 certified, so um, everything's built to a quality standard and tracked and traceability, and and we're gonna do the GMP next, and and we're actually learning the EU GMP stuff right now as far as you. traceability goes, and and all the paperwork that comes with that. Um, you know, as we get approached by more of these international companies. How many of these behemoths are out in the in the wild per se? Um, this will be our 14th one that we've ever built. Wow. Super awesome. So this is nothing new to us, you know. Um, what's, the, what's the purpose of like this little platform here? Uh, just so you can walk through it. <clears throat> oh, just to walk over to the other side? Yeah. So nothing gets messed up. So you can cut across. That's it, how right? you know an extractor made it, because <laughs> pipes on the freaking ground get ripped. Yeah, 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 do yeah. they not? Yeah. Yes, they do. We were just looking at a skid that had a manifold <laughs> kind of like sticking out. Yep. And, uh, Charles was saying, like, oh, you're going to step on that. It's like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. like, it's, it's protruding. Protruding, it's yeah. like, you know, like a half inch line. We ain't no fool. <laughs> That's how you know an extractor design. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I mean, many of them are on the ground. That's our like, little H section, we call it. Yeah, very um, smart. But that's just so you can bypass. So if you ever had a clog in your filter, you can still just keep going. Nice. Yeah, they're, they're scrubbing. This is filtration. So we do a metal, like 0.22 micron metal filter here for anything coming off the pump. So if the pump were to break down or if there was any metal or... Oh, is this the cooling system? So both the compressors oh, no. sit here. Oh, right. Th this is recovery. So this is yeah, actually processed, recovery. but we make sure that nothing's coming off. Okay. This is all filtration to make sure that nothing from the compressor Got ever it. gets into the that makes back sense. into the system. That makes sense. Um, but it was not a long ways to go because it'd have to get all the way through up through the condensers back in, you know, so. But it happens. Very cool. What uh, what pump do you guys use for for solvent recovery? Not for, do you use a corker for both? Yeah, a corker for both. It's a 591. Yeah. Um, I've used a corker. It's a good pump. <laughs> yeah, so we pretty much use every corker from an 091 to a, I mean, we're going to start using a 791 now. Uh, they're not as loud though, right? They're not as They're loud. totally different. It's like they're a belt, to get, they're a belt yeah. drive, no? Yeah. Even Cor so even Corkin says that they're, yeah, they're belt drive. Corkin says it's 70 dB, which is a washing machine. That's okay. So That's what they claim, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not going to fight with everyone. Well, I, mean, no, I, I know. I mean, I don't know which one we use. <laughs> I know. But, I know. It's nothing like the Haskell, like, oh my God. Shoo, shoo. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. really like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can definitely talk around them. I mean, it's obviously noisier than, than running passive, but. I remember the first time I heard a Haskell running, I thought it sounded like someone got like a mallet, like, a, mm -hmm. like an iron mallet, which like well, just hitting and, the ground. And if you mount the corkins like you're supposed to, where you like go like eight inches in the concrete and you yeah. J hook them and you do it the way they're right, they're actually really quiet. Really? Yeah. But with the smaller ones, we put them on wheels, but the big ones, like the fire iron one, like we have, we'll even put platforms so that you can do eight inches in the concrete and then they're pretty sturdy and they're really not that loud. So anyway, we can dampen the noise where, you know, what how, how, to. how does the, the gas return back to solvent tank? Is there like a line that's piped or, or is it like, how, how does it, like what path does it travel back to? Yeah, I mean, it all comes back. So it actually, since, since this is part of the white film, it actually, it actually acts as a precondenser. Yeah. So heat is being pulled out of here. Okay. Heat's being pulled out of here. It actually comes out of this side as a cool vapor. Mm. Okay. And then we but don't it's need- It's still vapor though? Yeah, but it's cold to the touch. Like you can grab the hose and it's like, like you can cool. feel it cool. Oh. And then we just run it and we can, we can technically just run air on it. We can get it back to a, to a liquid, um, but we condense it back to a liquid. And then it goes through a sub cooler. So like how everybody else does the coil, we just have a, like a really long path. Okay. Inside yeah. With a bunch of tubes, so it just we did it's like this U-shaped condenser we call it. So it just goes up and down, but that's running on the propane jacket system, so that's like negative sixty, negative eighty C. So it's actually like five condens condensation points to get it back wow. to negative sixty to get it cold. Wow. And it's wow. all in line. And really if cool. something goes wrong in between those points, you're able to close. I mean, it keeps flowing, you know, you just, anywhere you have a low pressure zone, you know, you, that, you really just got to understand high pressure and low pressure. Yeah, and you'll be so, able to see it because it'll read at each of those places, right? Yeah, and everything has a gauge and, and really just understand the flow. And that's why this system's really easy to follow the path. And it's like, you really just want to get it to this point where it just, it just runs itself. Do you guys use nitrogen in the process? So we, we, we would prefer not to. Using back cut and like the pressure? Yeah, I mean, so 
because we can do, we'll use our, our propane, our butane vapor to vapor push pressure. Yeah. yeah, it's vapor pressure instead of right. CO2. So you have one less thing, or nitrogen, yeah. one less thing to freaking yeah. deal with. The only time we would need nitrogen would be if you're running 100% butane like through CRC. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't like, we, we really, you know, we have, we have some different ways that we yeah. like to handle that, but, but technically you don't need nitrogen. There's lots of things we don't like about nitrogen. It gets in the supply tank, it pressurizes, it can shut it down. Like, who knows if it's bringing contaminants in or not? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. So that the, the pressure you're using is coming off of these, or like the head pressure off of these, or are you using spikes? The compressor runs the system. Compressor runs the system. Cool. Very interesting. Really, really cool. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here. Much appreciated.